Welcome to the Big Bang. In understanding how a rigid body moves across a plane, let's clarify some pointers within kinetics. Let's have a rigid body in space, this purple blob here. We will have multiple external forces acting on it. All these forces should combine to generate one resultant force, which we will draw in pink. We have this force acting from the center of mass. We can call this resultant force our inertial force. There should be also an inertial torque. Different from the inertial force, this inertial torque can act about any point in the body, but let's have it for now at the center of mass. If you subtract the body with the inertial force and the inertial torque from the other body with all the external forces that originated them, you get zero. Can you see why that's the case? The two systems are equipotent, which means that although we drew different forces and moments in each system, the resultant forces and moments from both systems are the same. Now we can go ahead and draw the same body and include all the external forces again, but also include the negative of the resultant force and the negative of the inertial torque. We can add all that up and it will all equal zero. Although the body is accelerating and rotating, the sum of everything is zero. This is what we call dynamic equilibrium. The DeLombard's principle of inertial forces outlines this concept. The idea here is that you can transform an accelerating body into a body that is in static equilibrium just by including the inertial force and inertial torque in that system. With that in mind, let's have that same system drawn again, with the center of mass and the external forces in the reference frame 0xyz. To get the body's equation of motion, we can add up all the external forces and set that equal to the mass m times the acceleration a. These external forces will be creating moments. We can set another reference frame in the body where the center of mass is the origin. We will call that a centroid reference frame. From the center of mass, we can draw the inertial moment I times alpha, the moment of inertia times the angular acceleration. From here now, we can write up the sum of all moments about the center of mass G. That's going to be equal to the derivative of the angular momentum, which we can say equals the moment of inertia times the angular acceleration. This gives us a couple of equations of motion that we can use in studying the motion of a rigid body. And I will see you next time.